Hey guys, what's up? This is Mel, and I am back to talk about The 100, episode 302, titled Wajeda, part 2, which premiered on Thursday, January 28, 2016, on The CW. And guys, seriously, my heart is still racing, and it's only been 15 minutes in the ep- since the episode ended. My heart has been racing since the moment it's, the episode started till right now, and I just... It's been a really long time since an episode has had me this pumped. This show, in fact, has me so pumped every time, and it was worth it. Oh my god, guys. So let's just get right into it. I'm going to go for 15 minutes today because there's just so much to talk about. And uh, yeah, so uh, let's begin. I do apologize firsthand if the audio may seem a bit off. Apparently, the my headphones that I was using as a mic don't work anymore. So now I'm trying to deal with what I have now. So enough about that let's get started and also shout out to my friend jen um who is who is a friend with me in this and i hope i answer many questions that she has so with that said 15 minutes let's start now something new that we learned in this episode Uh, where do i even begin there's so much stuff that we touched upon so okay so we have mount weather in itself and apparently um well i guess i should start there it's pretty closing it and everything um we see um abby jackson octavia jasper and lincoln go to mount weather they use the medical equipment there to help save nico's life and during that trip they realize that there can be good used out of this mountain they could turn this symbol of death into something good for not only the arcadians but also for the grounders as well and abby makes the decision that yes she's going to open the doors now and um while that's happening, Jasper is on the hunt for the, Maya's favorite painting, and is, and Octavia is there with him, and this is when he finally breaks down. I think, in a way, finding that painting was kind of, is it cathartic, maybe? Um, I don't know, but it seemed like it's something he needed to have happen, so I'm glad to have him have that moment, and come to that point where he's hit rock bottom in regards to Maya, because now he can only move up from there. So, um... Next, we have, uh, da, 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 da. oh yeah, I'll go with City of Lights, that whole storyline with Jaha, Murphy, and Moray, and all that, because the other stuff is all connected. So with that, we f- we actually see the City of Lights for the first time, and I'm a bit, a bit confused by it, but it seems to be like civilization, civilization was before any of this nuclear um, radiation stuff destroyed it. It seemed like city structures buildings clean and everything it's like it looks like what our cities today would look like if no one has lived if there's no pollution there's no garbage no no um damage many times like it's it's like brand new you know like when you go somewhere that's brand new you can tell the recent construction everything's all in pristine condition that's what the city of lights look like and it seems like it seems like I get the feeling it's like a virtual reality type thing, the portrayal of City of Lights, because we see Jaha talking to Ali there, but then a moment later we see Murphy breaking Jaha out of this meditation thing, and he's back on the on the shores. So it's like he's kind of in two places at once for some reason. But I'm thinking it's in his head. So maybe that pill that he gave Murphy the other uh, uh, last episode allows for that psychic connection to bring everyone to the City of Lights. And we see later on that people who the grounders who have those mutations on them they don't have them when they're in the city of lights and al even said this too there's no death in the city of lights so that has a whole bunch of questions going on right there so i'll leave it at that but we do end it with murphy and amori getting away from jaha and taking the boat with them and separating them so um there's that but ali's not worried about that so that has me a little freaked out by that so moving on to the bigger thing here um is the fact that we're on the manhunt for clark essentially. So, um, one of the sneak peeks that they revealed basically was the start of this episode, and that was with um, Kane, Bellamy, Monty, and Indra being stuck in that rover for three hours, and they f- basically get ambushed only to find that it's people from Farm Station, including Monty's mother, Hannah, and um, Pike, who was the Earth Skills instructor back on the Ark. He actually remembers Bellamy, and he even stated that Clark was one of his best students. Um, in the class. So um, there's that. And with them, um, Pike and Hannah agreed to help Kane, Bellamy, Monty, and Indra find Clark 
and the rest of the people from Farm Station went to the coordinates that Monty gives them for Arcadia. So there's that. And during, they seem to be a step behind in Clark and Rowan. They definitely go to the 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 trading post. They meet in Hyla, who's getting the crap beaten out of her. And she tells them what happens after realizing they are part of Clark's people. So they do that, and then they come across a field with dead Ice Nation people, and that's when Bellamy spots Clark. And once he spots her, he wants to go right in, but there's a full army of Ice Nation grounders coming towards them, so they can't really risk their cover. Meanwhile, Roan is trying to take Clark somewhere, and she realizes, based off the scar on his face, that he is part of Ice Nation. So she's thinking the worst, that he's bringing her back to the most um, violent clan of the grounders that she's heard of um Asgata, i guess they call it or they associate with that so there's that so she's fighting tooth and nail to stop him from doing that um but we definitely see rowan's skills in fighting we definitely see clark doing some trying to hold up her own there as well we also learn that rowan he's banished from his clan so bringing clark into the queen is kind of his way of getting back on their good side so there's that um few hiccups along the way but eventually clark ends up at polis and comes face to face with lexa apparently she contracted rowan to bring clark to him to her unharmed apparently that's not the case since clark isn't going to go without a fight so there's that lexa brings up a, a coming war and she reveals that rowan who is banished from the Ice Nation, is actually the son of the Ice Queen. And Lexa was going to grant, was going to nullify his banishment, but because his mother is marching against Polis, she's not going to do that. Instead, she locks him away. So that was pretty surprising in itself. So um, that's pretty much covered it. Um, Mount Weather, uh, Polis, City of Lights, and Farm Station. So there's that. Let's move on to the most shocking moment of the episode. It actually has to be Rowan's identity. When in the one of the sneak peeks they released was that fight by the stream with Clark and Rowan, where she, she manages to get the red rinsed out of her hair during that fight. So we back to blonde Clark. But during that fight, that's when we discover that he is part of Ice Nation through Clark's observation. So when later on, when he comes across these Ice Nation spotters in the field, he wants to keep Clark hidden. So it had me thinking maybe he's not working for the Ice Nation anymore and maybe he's working for himself or an outside point of view and when he actually killed people from his old clan, his former clan that he's trying to get into good graces with, it had me wondering, is it possible that he is working for Lexa? Of course, that turned out to be the case, but what was surprising me, surprised me the most is the fact that Rowan is the son of the Ice Queen leader of the ice nation so basically he's supposed to be the next le- leader or no wait they it's spirituality that decides their leaders in the clan so he's just supposed to be the heir of this of the nation or of his clan or something like that but it definitely surprised me when lexa called him prince rowan of asgata that was pretty cool i was not expecting that at all so moving on top three favorite moments guys can you guess what my number one favorite moment is if you said Bellamy and Clark, you are correct. I swear, it was like for a brief moment that they were actually face to face to each other, but I absolutely loved it. Heart was soaring. It was what I was waiting for. It's like, yes! And then Rowan had, Rowan had to wreck it by uh, by knocking Bellamy on or stabbing him in the leg and then knocking him out, allowing him and Clark to escape. It's like, oh, come on. It's like, give the guy a break. But here's the thing. It's not just that one brief moment. Okay, it is. But... This is what has me so hyped up to the fact that Bellark got some part of the moment. It's not like the two hugs we got to see in season two between the two. Nothing like that, but it's definitely up there because throughout this whole episode, Bellamy is insistent that he that we they find Clark. He is impatient to go after her. When he spots her in that field, he doesn't hesitate to go after her, ignoring the fact that there are Ice Nation grounders coming towards him that he could easily spot him or run to Clark or something like that. He, has to, he had to be pulled back to stop him from that. And then when he was in the cave, he he wanted to leave. He didn't want to lose Clark's location. And then he was so impatient and so insistent of finding her that he went alone in grounder gear, walked through the Ice Nation army that was passing 
so that he could find where he last spotted Clark. And it's like, that was just, wow. And then when he went in the cave and then he saw Clark, the look of relief on his face, and then when he brushed her hair out of her eyes and took the rag out of her mouth, uh, and he said that he has her, or he's, uh, let me find the quote, let me find the quote, come on. Uh, yeah, he says, I'll get you out. And then when Rowan attacks and pies that sword up against his throat, Clark is begging Rowan not to kill Bellamy and that she'd do anything he asked of her, which resulted in Rowan just stabbing Bellamy in the leg to slow him down from following them and knocking him out. So it's just the fact that they were willing to, to risk each other's lives for each other and to save each other was just fantastic in itself and then we go to an injured bellamy trying to follow their trail in the woods while not bleeding out from his leg wound he's caught up to monty they're telling him to slow it down take a step back get his leg checked but bellamy is so insistent on finding clark that he, that's all he thinks about he even he even says this to monty like, with big emphasis, with desperation. It's like, we can't lose Clark. We can't lose her. And I love the intensity. I love how much you can see it, that he is desperate to find her. It's just like, that's all I needed. If I had to only get a few seconds, maybe less than five minutes of Bellamy and Clark in front of each other and actually interacting, that's okay. As long as I got these little moments that show that Bellamy is is only focused on finding Clark and that's his sole mission, then like, I'm okay with that. Completely had my Bellark heart soaring. Love it. And yeah, now I can't wait for next week for to see how he tries to find her again. It's just uh, so close yet so far away. I, I love it. I want that reunion hug that they teased in this the season promo. I want that hug. Okay, so moving on from that favorite moment. Don't know what can top that. Really, I don't. But it's actually Clark. And that is Clark constantly fighting against Rowan to escape. You gotta love her for her always fighting attitude back at the stream, back at the field. Um, and then when she's um, in Polis, when she finds other people surrounded by her, I have just really liked that she wasn't giving up, that she wasn't just going to take things lying down. She was going to she was going to try to escape if it killed her. And I really like that about Clark. Even after three years of isolation, at least, well not three years, three months of isolation, at least that part of her hasn't died. The the will to fight. So I really like that. And um, next favorite moment. It has to be th the sneak peek that they actually released about the whole leading up to the farm station actually being found, especially with Monty being reunited with his mom. I really liked that scene. My heart was even pounding. I even watched that scene a, f a couple times before the episode actually aired. So, yeah, it was. I really liked that we actually got to see another part of the arc. Sad about Monty's dad, but at least he got his mom back. I mean, it seems to be like a, a reoccurring trend here. A lot of the kids that are seen on the show are either orphaned or they only have one parent left we i don't think there's a kid on here that we've seen both parents still alive so hopefully that changes later on but it was definitely great to see a family reunion in that sense and um another favorite moment going over is the fact that we got to see lexa it was at the very end of course but the fact that we see her concern for clark and that even though it was done about the right way have, having a bounty on clark to be brought back safely or maybe there's two different bounties, one to have Clark's head to, brought to, to be brought to the Ice Queen, or if the one for Roan was separately from Lexa. But the fact that she wanted Clark to be unharmed, the fact that she wants Clark's help for the upcoming war, and Clark's reaction was just beautiful. She just spits in her face, in Lexa's face, that is, and she's struggling against the grounders that have taken taken hold of her and this is what clark says and excuse my language but she she shouts out you bitch you wanted the commander of death you've got her i'll kill you as she's being dragged away love it that anger in clark and rightfully so because blexa be betrayed her back in 215 so i just love that clark has not forgotten that in that three months of 
um, dwelling in what she had to do because of Lex's betrayal is very evident. And I definitely love that. I can't wait to see that Clark facing Lexa again. So there's that for sure. So I'm, I can't really complain about this episode. So top three peeved moments. Like I said, I don't have an issue with this episode. The only issue I have is the whole confusion about the City of Lights. I mean, I get it's meant to be a mystery, but like on the one hand, when we first see the City of Lights, it doesn't look like anything that would fit in the world that we've already seen in the 100 for the last um, two seasons and two episodes. So it's like, how are we seeing a city of lights where it's completely untouched by the nuclear devastation that destroyed the earth basically for the last 97 years? So um, I'm thinking it's all mental, maybe the pill, which is supposed to erase emotions. Oh, there's the timer. Maybe that pill is meant to establish some kind of mental connection to bring everyone to this maybe a holographic place where they could live out lives with everyone being perfect, no mutations, no um, ostracized issues and stuff like that. But I don't know. I hope to find some answers soon. Otherwise, this confusion is just going to irritate me. So moving on, wh what will I remember most about this episode? The brief Bell Lark part that we got. Hello. I mean, yeah, I shouldn't base off my favorite moments based off of ships, but you can't help it. That's like what you're rooting for off to the side and from the fact that you want your character to still survive. But you want to see this ship thrive, and I am on Team Bell Arc. So I'm just saying. Also, the fact that Monty got his mom, that's a big plus too. Finding Farm Station, big plus as well. Seeing Lexa again, okay, for sure. It's great to see her alive still and in the big Polis Tower, but Bell Arc all the way. Big reminder. Um, so random questions. First one, can anyone else see the conflicting perspectives that we saw briefly between Kane and Pike? Kane wants to keep the peace and the truce with the grounders, therefore not colonizing Mount Weather or moving in. But Pike wants to move into Mount Weather now that the, the um, Sky people, the Sky crew have conquered it. So that's going to cause issues if whatever Lincoln has been telling them about what the Grounders' perception of them moving in would mean. So I definitely sense some future tension. How about you? Uh, next question. How do you think the whole City of Lights thing works out? Touched upon it briefly just a moment ago, but I'd like to hear your own theories about it. Maybe I'm missing something and, or that you picked up on. So let me know for sure in the comments below. Last question. How long before Bellamy can truly find and keep Clark within his grasp this time. So close, yet not close enough in this episode. So how long before do I have to wait to get that hug? It's very obvious that I'm a big Bell Arc fan, if you haven't picked up on that already. But, yeah, I do have my reasons. I'll touch upon that in another video. I'll, t I'll let you know about that for sure. So, moving on. No more questions, so let's go to predictions. Um, according to the promo for episode 303, we see Lexa proposing to Clark about a merger between the Tree Crew and Sky Crew. Basically, Lexa wants Clark's people to become her people, but Clark refuses. Rightfully so. Good for Clark. And apparently, on the other side, Bellamy finds out that apparently nothing is as it seems, and there's a possible trap um, set for the Arcadians. So, um, we're gonna see how that unfolds. Um, so with the ending of this episode, we got, hang on. Okay, sorry, phone was ringing. Um, so yeah, with any of this episode that has Clark back in Polis, so, um, how is she gonna get out of that if she's not gonna go, um, quietly? doesn't look like she's going to be allowed to leave anytime soon if Lexa wants to make a deal with her. And um, from Clark's reaction, based on the reveal of who Rowan really is, um, maybe she teams up with him to um, escape Polis. Maybe we see Rowan back at Arcadia because of Clark. Maybe they ha form some weird friendship between them or something, like warriors in arms or something. I don't know. I 
I can see a love-hate thing going on between Clark and Rowan. Maybe like a brother-sister love-hate thing going. Because they definitely brought up a lot of simil- She brought up a lot of similarities between them. He denies it, but it's kind of hard not... It's kind of hard not to accept that stuff. So I actually hope to see Clark and Rowan in scenes together as well. So hopefully... That's a prediction that will come true. Um, next prediction. Tensions between Arcadia and the newly joined Farm Station. Because I'm pretty sure Farm Station people, the 63 of them that survived, are going to follow the leadership of Pike. I think. And since Pike is conflicting views with Kane, and who is um, kind of like a, a, an advisor for Abby, then that's going to cause issues. So there's that. Uh, another prediction. Maybe more Bell Arc moments. Maybe more Klexa stuff going on. I don't know. I'm all for looking at these different ships, especially Bell Arc and Cl- and Bell Arc and Klexa. I do have those fighting, but Bell Arc will always win. But Klexa does win my heart. Some moments today definitely did when Clark pull the whole commander of death card out for sure. So that's about it, guys. What did you think about this episode? As you can pretty much tell by my voice um i'm still beaming over it i guess you can see i'm still excited about it i'm definitely going to look up a few scenes back on youtube or somehow get a hold of them or tumblr i'm definitely checking tumblr and speaking of that check it out later but anyways if you have anything you wanted to talk about with me about the episode itself your own thoughts theories predictions any of that leave a comment down below i'd love to hear about it um Let's keep this conversation going. I do want to hear your own thoughts, as you can tell. I'm a little stumped on a few things, or I may be only one-tracked mine on a few of other things, so there's that. Um, also, um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Like this video, please and thank you. And check out my other videos if you haven't done so already, or if you have other shows that you want to see if I cover them here's your chance. Um, also, speaking of Tumblr, like before, sorry if my thoughts are everywhere, but... Go check out my Tumblr. Links for that will be down below. I, The 100 is pretty much probably the most reblogged show I've done recently. So everything's as organized as I can get it. Um, quotes, synopses, um, promos, sneak peeks, any of that, I reblog it. So check it all out. Um, possible spoilers as well. Links for that down below. Check it out for sure. Um, and yeah. That is about it. So thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate it. I can't wait to see how the rest of the season goes. And I hope you tune in every week to see what I thought of each new episode that comes our way. And I hope you leave your comment below to share the experience with me. And um, yeah, so that's about it. I am going to go and update all that Tumblr stuff now. uh, For the show. And yeah, so this is Mel. Wish you all a great week. Ugh. great day great week wherever you are i truly apologize about my tongue-tied ways again hi to my friend jen um who uh i hope watched the episode tonight but if not go check it out now like right now so anyways bye guys